Suppose an agreement were entered into in this form. We, the people of Boston, agree to maintain a fort on Governor's Island to protect ourselves and our posterity against invasion. This agreement, as an agreement, would clearly bind nobody but the people then existing. Secondly, it would assert no right, power, or disposition on their part to compel their posterity to maintain such a fort. It would only indicate that the supposed welfare of their posterity was one of the motives that induced the original parties to enter into the agreement. When a man says he is building a house for himself and his posterity, he does not mean to be understood as saying that he has any thought of binding them, nor is it to be inferred that he is so foolish as to imagine that he has any right or power to bind them, to live in it. So far as they are concerned, he only means to be understood as saying that his hopes and motives in building it are that they, or at least some of them, may find it for their happiness to live in it. So when a man says he is planting a tree for himself and his posterity, he does not mean to be understood as saying that he has any thought of compelling them, nor is it to be inferred that he is such a simpleton as to imagine that he has any right or power to compel them to eat the fruit. So far as they are concerned, he only means to say that his hopes and motives in planting the tree are that its fruits may be agreeable to them. So it is with those who originally adopted the Constitution. Whatever may have been their personal intentions, the legal meaning of their language, so far as their posterity was concerned, simply was that their hopes and motives in entering into the agreement were that it might prove useful and acceptable to their posterity, that it might promote their union, safety, tranquility, and welfare, and that it might tend to secure to them the blessings of liberty. The language does not assert nor at all imply any right, power, or disposition on the part of the original parties to the agreement to compel their posterity to live under it. If they had intended to bind their posterity to live under it, they should have said that their objective was not to secure the, to them the blessings of liberty, but to make slaves of them, for if their posterity are bound to live under it, they are nothing less than slaves of their foolish, tyrannical, and dead grandfathers.